Good night. Uh, coach, it just seems like it's uh, a theme that's repeating itself this season. The team gives up soft goals, comes back, fights back, but then gives up more goals late in the game to, to not get all the points. I'm just curious uh, if you're frustrated or what are you feeling right now? Yeah, of course, frustrated because I felt that we did a great game, great game. And again, little moments of, you know, lack of concentration and stuff like that, you know, put us under pressure. Uh, but at the same time, as I am frustrated, I'm very proud of the game the players did. It's not easy to come back to zero at home at halftime. And even before that, um, I felt that we're putting a lot of pressure, a lot of energy. Good football, because I felt uh, breaking the pressure from New England in the middle block in a 4-4-1-1, four, 4-2-3-1 four, four, one, one, four, wasn't easy. So we start to be very mobile, moving the ball fast, creating some chances, maybe in the first half not so clear. But in the second half, I felt the amount of pressure we put on them was very good, good to see. Uh, the immediate pressure was great. Uh, the active defending was very good for the most part. So it's just, you know, we were two minutes away from being very, very, very happy. Uh, so I cannot be completely frustrated because I felt there are many positives in today's performance. But as I told the players, there's nothing we can say now that will make us feel better. This taste in the mouth is really, really bad. Yeah, Gazal was the message in the rock locker room, of course. <clears throat> Fred gets up, you know, very unfortunately, goal within 30 seconds. Um, you all can see again. What was the overall message in the locker room that kind of spurred on this comeback? Uh, I mean, it's a draw eventually, but I mean, was your message to the players? Yeah. Um, normally, I keep things a little bit in private, but a little bit what I just said, you know, um, frustrated as everyone. It was a silent uh, locker room. And I just said, tell them I'm very proud of the effort and the good football that they played today. I think if we put this type of performances uh, game after game, uh, we're going to do well. Um, also because in my list, when I look at the calendar and, you know, 16th game, in the season and facing New England, who I think is one of the best teams in, in the conference, with a great coach, with many, many good players. I felt it was kind of uh, a point where we were assessing where is the team, how are we playing, what, what, what are we uh, missing. And uh, I think there are many positives on that. So, uh, of course, you know, uh, conceding easy goals is one of those things that we need to improve. But I think uh, the hardest thing in football is to create chances and to play offensively. So I think uh, defensively, not that it's easier, but we will we will try to work on that. Yeah, but <clears throat> just real quick, you talk about conceding goals and it happened again. You know, you mentioned you're two minutes away from a win. I mean, why does this keep happening? I mean, what it seems time? like what time? well, you, you you mentioned the team were was two minutes away from a win, but again, you concede at the very last moment. I mean. Why, why does it keep happening, essentially? Well, uh, <laughs> there is not a, a, a full answer on that. I think it's just happening. We've been messaging, we've been training. We didn't have too much time to train specifically on this topic, uh, you know, after Orlando. But uh, so, yeah, we'll keep working on that. And again, at times it's just, you know, uh, moments of concentration, I would say, because it's not like our back line is a disaster and we're broken and they get chances after chances. It's not like that. And even in Orlando, you remember, they had some territorial dominance, yes, in certain points of the game, but they didn't create enough chances. And two of their best chances were in offsides. So it's not like we are conceding high quality chances every game. Now, there are moments of concentration that we are allowing the soft goals and it's a little bit of lack of concentration or, or certain things that we can do better, blocking crosses, blocking shots. We talk a lot about that, and, uh, but it keeps happening. So it's as many things in life. You have to continue, continue improving, improving, improving. At some point, we will fix it. 
It's the same as when I arrived here uh, in 2021, we were considering a lot of goals from set pieces. And then we started to concede goals. And at some point, we, we were pretty good on that. So it's, again, messaging, working, working, working. And at some point, you fix it. So that's the hope that with the training and the video, we can correct some of those. Coach, your thoughts on how well Yakomakis is playing this season? It feels like he's scoring every game. I know he's not, but it kind of feels like that, though. It feels like that, yes. His average is pretty good. Uh, not just his goals, but overall his performance, his effort. I think today we were using using him way better in terms of in the build up. Uh, we found a different uh, way to break the midfield line with those passes on Yaku and then Yaku shielding the ball and then playing, uh, you know, the attacking midfielders because we identified that the opponents are you know, targeting our attacking midfielders, whether it's Rosette or Luis in the pocket and Thiago in the pocket. And then at times it opens the channel for Yahoo in the middle. And from there we can break uh, the lines. So I felt today it was pretty good on that. Something we've been messaging constantly, but again, uh, very happy that Yaku is that type of player that can help us in the build-up, can help us stretching opponents, can help us once we are in the box, putting pressure on the center backs. Um, and it's just good. Again, I have to manage his load. And today, actually, I was a bit more. Uh, I took a little bit of risk on the amount of minutes I I, I kept uh, Yaku on the field. But I felt that the game needed. And actually, since we were mostly in the attacking half, he wasn't making a lot of uh, sprints in, in long, longer distances. So that's why I took that risk. But still, it was a bit of a risk because he needs to build his fitness, and, and we're working on that. Left to right, Joe, Doug Henry. Gonzalo, uh, LN United's goalkeepers have saved 52.5% of shots this season. Um, so to your point, team played great, statistically dominant, 20 shots to five. But when you're conceding at that high of a rate from the goalkeepers, like, how do you manage that, especially with a goalkeeper like Brad, who obviously is very important to the you know overall team? <clears throat> yeah, I mean... Uh, it's evident the first goal, you know, it's evident it was a, a mistake in the build up. Again, I take responsibility always on those mistakes, always. Every time we lose the ball in the build up, I take responsibility because I ask my players to play out from the back. And that's how we, that's the core of our game, is disrupt the opponent since the very beginning. So every time there's a mistake from the center back, from the goalkeeper, is my mistake because I ask them to be brave, to try to play from the back, to try to break the opponents, because I feel like he's the best way to go. Now, it, it, it was the case that, yes, Brad missed a pass, and it was a clear goal for them. OK. But after that, I felt that the team played really well. So uh, how we stop doing that is, again, training, training, messaging. And I don't see any other uh, path through improvement rather than watching the things that we have to do better, training, talking to the players, good organization, better communication, and try to apply it in the game. I mean, the process is the same. At times, again, it doesn't manifest it as quick as we want as coaches, but, uh, but I feel like that's the only path we can follow. Uh, so we have to stick to the process uh, and just continue with improvement. Doug and Henry, locker room, Joe, uh, go ahead. Just two questions. Is Guzan gave up the first goal. Uh, the third goal, he got beat to the near post. Is there a chance that he came back too quickly is the first no. question. No, okay. no, no. I mean, we were talking about uh, the, the game in Orlando, a fantastic save he makes on, on one of the shots. It was a great save. Uh, today, I would say the first one, yes, of course, but again, I put it on me. The third one, I think, is tough because he's not seeing r right. I think the vision was okay. a bit blocked, and, and actually my players are told to try to block the – a stronger foot of the pawn, and they were trying to block Carlos Hill left foot. And then when they dribble, of course, he he, he makes a fantastic play. He's one of the best players also mm -hmm. in this league. So you have to give credit to Carlos Hill. You have to give credit to New England, who they have a lot of injuries and probably they were not playing probably their best game, and they still manufactured three goals. That that's only a signature of a good team. Um, so again, I think credit to Carlos Hill on that goal. I don't think the third one is on Brad. And again, we have full confidence on Brad as a leader, as a captain, and as a goalkeeper. He's just great. Today probably wasn't his night, especially in that first goal. But uh, other than that, he's always a great goalkeeper for us. And the second and third goals uh, were crosses. Uh, the first, I, don't, I think mm -hmm. Lennon didn't close down the, the passer 
the third, I think it happened too quick for Chole to get over there. But the idea, I believe you said a few games ago, was you want guys out there to pressure the crossers. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that's, again, something that actually we work this week. Uh, with the limited time we had, we put certain things with low intensity, but messaging, blocking crosses, the organization inside the box. So, again, it's, at times it's not always – sprinting all the way out and, 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 and stop the cross because times the distance is too long and you leave gaps into our primacy zones, but it's probably been more in the angle of the cross and that's something we can work on certainly to make it more difficult for the crosser. Uh, in, the, in the last one, I feel like, again, Santi wasn't even in position. They restart the game right away and then Chol was kind of half and half. We were thinking it was a long uh, cross from, from the foul. And uh, and they play short, Farrell dribbles with the ball. And I think at some point, uh, Chol was confusing on going outside or pressing the guy on the ball. And Andrew was the same. There was a guy running in between Andrew and Purata. So he stayed with him instead of going outside and probably put more pressure on the crosser. So again, some of those little things that maybe we can do better. Then the clearance from Purata, I think he slips. And, and then the, the clearance is central, where we always message longer and out wide. So those clearances, we have to do better. It was an unfortunate play for Purata. Then again, just what I just explained. Uh, but yeah, you're right. We need to do better at blocking crosses, blocking shots. Eventually, in football, you know, it's tough to block all of them. Uh, Carlos Hill goal, the third one, is the only shot they had in the second half. So, I mean... Yeah, we need to do better in blocking every shot uh, of the game to, to not concede goals. Yeah. But Gonzalo, so going back to the statistic that Joe mentioned, uh, the team has uh, only stopped 52% of the shots that it's faced. Uh, the other part of that statistic is that no other team has, uh, has not blocked, uh, sorry, has only blocked 62% of the shots uh, that they have faced. So aside from the, from the goalkeeping... I'm sorry, I didn't understand your I'm question. I'm sorry, let me start over. Yeah, please. So Atlanta United is, uh, has blocked 52% of the shots. Yes. No other team in MLS has blocked less than 62% of the shots that they have faced. Uh, oh. And Atlanta United faced three shots on target tonight. All three were goals. Uh, aside from a goalkeeping thing, this also kind of speaks to the quality of shots that the team is giving up. So how do you go about preventing the team from giving up so many good shot opportunities? Yes, I, I don't think we have given a lot of clear chances overall. Of course, there are games where we were certainly giving up uh, quality chances against us for sure. But I think overall, in the big scheme of things, in the 16 games, I don't think we have given that amount of clear chances. That's my perception, obviously. We can check with the stats and see, you know, expected goals uh, per shot um, and, and look at the rankings in the league and look at things like that. But uh, it's something certainly we need to take a look at because it's not good that we are, you know, uh, conceding, you know, 48%, I would say, of, of the times that, that the opponent's shot on goal is, is too much. Uh, I don't think the expected goals uh, conceded goes equal to the expected goals uh, or the goals that we concede at the end of the day. And I think we are uh, underperforming on those. So, of course, we have to do better on that. Again, the message is always being compact, having enough numbers in the, inside the box, having the right positioning inside the box, blocking crosses, blocking shots, the position of the center meets. We talk about all of those things. It's, again, how we can apply it in the game in every action. It feels like that. It feels like every time the opponent shoots from certain areas, it's, it's a goal. And it's, it's uh, something that we need to fix for sure. We have to be critical with ourselves and, and improve those. But again, um, I think rather than that, or other than that, we played a very good game in general. John, last one in English. Yeah. Coach, I wanted to ask about Miguel Berry and Miguel getting the shot in the back of the net, finally getting a tally. I wanted you to get into the amount of work that Miguel has put in, not in game state, but during the week to give himself opportunities like he had tonight and finally get a goal on the board for Atlanta United. Yes, I mean, it is great, uh, Miguel's story, because, uh, of course, 
you can see that it it took a little bit of a while to have that confidence and believe in himself to be a little bit more um, selfish in those moments. Uh, some other times he wasn't shooting those, he was passing outside and sprinting because he's such a humble guy that likes to do good for others. And, and I like my number nines to be a little bit selfish in those moments. Um, so very happy for him because he never stopped uh, training, stopped, stopped watching film with Eugenio on the things that he can do better, his positioning, his link on play, his runs inside the box. And he's been very, uh, how do you say, self-aware of the areas where he can improve. And I think he's been improving over the weeks. Uh, I mean, at the end of the game, he wasn't happy about his goal. He was upset that in the last play before the goal, he could have gone to the corner and maybe waste a bit of time or created some corner or something. And he was crossing for, for Luis because he felt we had a clear chance to score the fourth goal. So again, that's what tells me that he's uh, a very humble guy and, and, and is a critic with his performance. So happy for his goal. It was a fantastic goal, his first goal. And I hope, I hope many more to come. Yeah, Thank Spanish, you. Diego, there in the back. Gonzalo, ¿cómo va? ¿Qué, eh, qué cosa rara que tiene el fútbol, ¿no? ¿Cómo, cómo explicar un partido en el que pasás eh, de la frustración inicial a la euforia de haberlo dado vuelta con, con un gran, gran esfuerzo y después una, una desatención eh, te termina haciendo pagar caro, caro todo eso? Eh, ¿Qué sentís más? ¿La frustración? de haber perdido esos dos puntos que, que parecían ganados, eh, la calentura de pequeños errores eh, que te terminan jugando una mala pasada en el partido, o destacar lo que vos habías dicho, ¿no? el buen partido que hicieron más allá de esos tres pequeños errores que los terminan pagando caro. Y lo otro es cómo analizás el nivel del arbitraje de la MLS eh, porque hoy creo que, que no fue un buen arbitraje. He escuchado a otros entrenadores también criticar ese punto. Gracias. Sí, bueno, eh, hablar de un poco el sabor que me llevo es obviamente de frustración, eh, pero a la vez sé que hoy hicimos un gran partido. Sé que cuando vea el, el video eh, voy a estar muy contento de cómo jugó el equipo y creo que otra vez frustrado porque una vez más pareciera que cada pequeño error que cometemos atrás nos cuesta, ¿no? Entonces, eh, ¿cómo trabajar en eso? Seguramente será el plan de la semana, cómo mejorar en esa situación. Eh, pero me gusta mucho la progresión del equipo. Hoy creo que salimos, eh, supimos eh, progresar la pelota de atrás para adelante de una muy buena manera contra un equipo que cuando se defiende, se defiende muy bien. Tienen defensores muy, muy físicos, los, los cuatro de atrás, eh, que de hecho eran tres centrales, eh, Farrell jugando el lateral derecho, son muy físicos. Es difícil batirlos en el mano a mano, es difícil batirlos por velocidad. Eh, el lateral izquierdo Jones es muy físico y aún así supimos cómo romper las líneas de presión, eh, creo que los centrales están mejorando mucho en eso. Entonces hay muchas cosas positivas, la mentalidad de regresar de un 2-0 no es fácil eh, y creo que el equipo hizo muchas cosas buenas eh, y es un sabor muy, muy agridulce el que nos llevamos hoy. Dos, estuvimos a dos minutos de estar súper eufóricos y festejando una gran victoria el día de hoy que nos hubiera puesto por encima de New England en la tabla y en una muy buena posición. Pero bueno, como dices, qué cosas que tiene el fútbol. Creo que el proceso y todo el camino que hemos llevado eh, va a dar frutos. Creo que no estamos en una mala posición tampoco en la tabla y, y creo que... Si seguimos poniendo este tipo de rendimientos constantemente, que es algo más que, 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 que me gustaría tener cuatro o cinco partidos jugando a este nivel, eh, creo que vamos a estar bien. Eh, es lo que sentí al principio de la temporada y, y espero en eso. Del arbitraje eh, estoy tratando de no hablar para nada, trato de hablar y, y, y preguntarles mis dudas directamente a los árbitros al final de los partidos. De manera muy respetuosa voy y les pregunto ciertas circunstancias que me gustaría tener alguna respuesta. Eh, y después el club seguramente... Eh, presentará a, 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 alguna nota, algo, eh, ya lo hemos hecho, eh, pero queremos hacerlo por los canales correspondientes, porque creo que nada ganamos acá a venir a decir, a decir, a decir, y creo que hay que, hay que ir directo a la fuente. Y, y creo que vi lo mismo que tú dices, creo que vi lo mismo que tú dices el día de hoy, pero bueno, 
eh, trataremos de ser mejores que, que todo eso y, y creo que una vez más si no hemos cometido esos errores atrás no estaremos hablando del arbitraje, estaremos hablando de un, un buen partido del día de hoy, entonces tranquilo con esa parte sí. Coach sí. hace unos días hablabas del copy paste eh, hoy fue uno de esos días en Chicago se le dio la vuelta, se estaba ganando 3-2, se empató hoy se empata prácticamente de la misma manera en Orlando se empató Tres puntos de nueve posibles. ¿Qué me dices al respecto? Sí, no sé si copy-paste. Um, creo, que, creo que el día de hoy ha sido uno de los mejores partidos que hemos jugado en los últimos cinco o seis partidos. Creo que, salvo quitando un poquito Colorado, hoy fue excepcional para mí. Porque aparte el rival que tenemos enfrente le doy mucho valor a lo que es New England. Para mí era un sinodal. Desde que vi el calendario en la jornada 1, dije, jornada 16, New England va a decirnos mucho en dónde estamos a nivel eh, individual y colectivo en el equipo. Y creo que así fue, nos demostró lo que somos. Creo que somos un equipo que cuando pone esa intensidad somos muy peligrosos. Eh, no permitimos muchas llegadas del rival. Y creo que nos, nos señala también que necesitamos hacer lo mejor en defender centros. Es, es para mí lo que me deja. Eh, no creo que haya sido un copy-paste de, de Chicago. Jugamos mucho mejor el día de hoy que en Chicago. Incluso contra 10 hombres no jugamos tan bien como el día de hoy. Y creo que ha sido un paso adelante, aunque no se ve así en el momento, por el resultado. Eh, profe, buenas noches. Juan Carlos Brando para La Mejor Atlanta. Eh, ¿A quién ha considerado como el posible sustituto de Luis Araullo ante su inminente salida? Eh, bueno, eh, están evaluando allá arriba algunas posibilidades. Seguramente en las próximas semanas me las presentarán. Yo sé que ya están trabajando en, en esa situación eh, acerca de un posible reemplazo. Yo sé que ya lo están haciendo, pero hemos tenido partidos muy juntos y no hemos podido hablar de ello. Eh, y después dentro del equipo creo que podría haber alternativas eh, en, en el tiempo en el que capaz que venga el fichaje de, y todo esto, estamos pensando en todo eso y, y estamos buscando alternativas, pero la directiva estará trabajando muy duro para, para conseguir esos jugadores, en algún momento me los presentarán, platicaremos y veremos las características que, que queremos y las posibilidades de traer algún jugador, pero sé que la intención de la directiva es, es traer jugadores que impacten muy bien en el equipo. Y finalmente, una, eh, con respecto a Tyler Wolf eh, ¿Cómo ve a este jugador que también es muy joven y que eh, ha demostrado muy buenas cosas en, el, en su fútbol? Muy bien, la verdad es que creo que ha, ha hecho una progresión bastante buena. Anotó en Open Cup, anotó dos goles en segundo equipo, ya ha anotado dos veces en, en, en el primer equipo. El día de hoy incluso puso una casi asistencia ahí en un muy buen arranque a la espalda del lateral derecho y después casi, casi una asistencia. Me gusta que es un jugador muy versátil, que me puede jugar por derecha, por izquierda, puede jugar por dentro, puede jugar por fuera. Es un jugador que tiene gol y que tiene un gran sentido de conectividad. Si se encuentra con Tiago puede conectar perfectamente, si tiene que correr a la espalda lo hace. Entonces, muchacho con mucho futuro que llevaremos paso a paso para que dé lo mejor. Gracias. Sí.